Hi, this is Dr. Perry Carpenter. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to join me on today's program, which is uh, all about triceps training. And uh, what is the importance of properly training your triceps? Well, of course, everyone in the gym wants to have impressive-looking triceps, and everyone wants to have strong and powerful arms. And certainly the triceps are critical uh, in the overall strength of the upper arms, but also in our activities of daily living, the triceps are, are essential muscles uh, in all of our activities that involve any kind of pushing uh, action. And if you think about some of the activities of daily living that you're involved with uh, every day, uh, you realize that your triceps are constantly active. So the triceps uh, are important muscles to focus on uh, and strengthen and there are several techniques that I'd like to share with you today about how to maximize your triceps training efforts. So before we get into some exercise training techniques, uh, let's first go over a little bit of the anatomy of the tricep muscles so that you'll understand uh, how the triceps work and then when we get to our exercise technique suggestions, uh, the philosophy of our training methods will unfold uh, as you understand uh, how the triceps uh, function. So let's begin with a little bit of anatomy on the triceps and then we'll get into some specific training methods. Now as the name suggests, uh, there's three component parts of the triceps. Uh, the word tri means three and I remember speaking to one of my patients one time uh, about her thigh muscles and I said, Mrs. Jones, uh, these are your quadriceps and by the way, Mrs. Jones, how many muscles are there in the quadriceps? And she said, well, Dr. Carpenter, you know, I don't know anything about anatomy. <laughs> and so you don't need to know anything about anatomy to know that there are three muscles in the triceps. The name gives it away. So in the triceps, the three parts of the triceps we call heads of the muscle. And these are s separate and distinct functional units within this large muscle belly that we call collectively the triceps. So individually the triceps include the long head of the triceps, the medial head of the triceps, and the lateral head of the triceps. And we'll, we'll break these out and look at each one of these heads individually in just a minute. For our purposes here today, it's important that you realize that of the three component parts, of the three heads of the tricep muscles, the long head is unique. And the long head is unique because of the three heads, it's the only one of the three heads that crosses two joints. Now, when a muscle crosses two joints, we say that it is bi-articular, and bi means two, like a bicycle. Now, if the long head is bi-articular, what are the other two heads? Well, the other two heads, meaning the medial head and the lateral head, they cross and act at only one joint. That means that they are uni-articular, such as a uni-cycle. So the long head is biarticular and the medial and lateral heads are uniarticular. Now, because the long head is biarticular, it has action at two joints. Because the medial and lateral heads are uniarticular, they have action at only one joint. And most people are familiar with the f action of the tricep muscles at the elbow. And so if you go to any gym across the country nowadays, you'll see uh, fitness enthusiasts doing all kinds of elbow extension exercises for their triceps and that's good because all three of the heads of the tricep muscles do act at the elbow. However, the missing piece in triceps exercises and the main strength of the triceps is at the additional joint at the shoulder due to the action of the long head and I'm going to go over some specific exercise techniques uh, that specifically target the long head and even more focused they target the long head at the shoulder in addition to 
the elbow. So here's a diagram for you, uh, and it shows uh, both the front and the bas back aspects of the upper arm. Here on the left, this is the front of the upper arm. Here on the right is the back of the upper arm, and, and this is the tricep muscles. So let's point these heads out individually here. This large muscle belly here, this is the long head of the triceps. And it's called the long head because it's the longest of the three. You can see that it extends all the way here from the elbow, all the way up, and attaches uh, all the way up here onto the shoulder blade. Then we have the lateral head, which is out here. And lateral means to the side, so from the back, this is the outside of the upper arm, so this is the lateral head. And then from behind, you can just barely see the little tiny medial head right in here. And the medial head uh, also attaches here at the elbow and then disappears underneath the long head uh, where it travels up the upper arm to terminate right about in this region right here. So there's the three heads of the uh, tricep muscle and it's the uh, specific anatomy not here at the elbow that makes the triceps unique, but it's the specific anatomy up here at the shoulder that's going to be the basis of our philosophy here for uh, the exercises that I'm going to share with you. So let's explore this in even just a hair more detail and uh, I'll point out the origins and insertions of these three muscles, just so the anatomy of this is clear in your mind the very next time you step into the gym to do uh, some triceps training exercises. You'll be thinking uh, about these anatomic relationships, and it might result in you uh, adopting some of the exercises that I'm going to show you today, and perhaps even discarding some of the exercises that have been uh, some of your favorite exercises up till now. So the long head of the triceps has its origin or origination right here on the scapula bone. This is the shoulder blade bone. So this little bony landmark on the scapula is known as the infraglenoid tubercle. So that's the origin of the long head. The medial head has its origination on this part of the upper arm bone. And the upper arm bone, we call that the humerus bone. So this shaded purple area here is where the medial head uh, originates. Well, that leaves the lateral head. And then the lateral head has its origination point right here on the upper portion of the upper arm bone. So the exact names and specific landmarks where these uh, three heads of the triceps muscles originate are not that important for our purposes. But what is important for our purposes is that you recognize and realize that two of the three heads of the triceps muscles have their origination here on the arm bone. And one of the heads of the tricep muscles is unique because it has its origination point here, not on the arm bone, but on the shoulder blade bone. And that's going to be the basis uh, of our philosophy for maximally activating and developing uh, the tricep muscles with our exercises uh, in the gym. Okay, so collectively, all three of the heads of the tricep muscles we know uh, extend the elbow and operate down here in our pushing exercises by extending the elbow. But what's commonly overlooked or is simply not known by most fitness enthusiasts is that because the long head attaches and originates up here on the shoulder blade bone, that it also has action at the shoulder. And specifically, its actions at the shoulder involve extension and adduction of the shoulder. And so we're going to incorporate these two actions, extension of the shoulder and adduction of the shoulder, uh, in the exercise recommendations that follow. 
So if we know that the long head of the triceps attaches on the shoulder blade, what is the best position and what are the very best exercises uh, that activate this, this long head, the, the largest and, and bulkiest part of the tricep muscle? Well, we have to get it into the proper position, and the proper position is what's known as the pre-stretch position. The pre-stretch position is a p position that stretches or elongates the long head of the triceps across the shoulder joint, across its origination at the shoulder joint, which then puts it in the most advantageous position for a strong contraction at the elbow joint. So the pre-stretch position for the triceps is with the shoulder flexed, shoulder flexed, not extended, but flexed, which thereby increases the length of the long head across the shoulder or the glenohumeral joint. So as a technique suggestion, and these are going to be demonstrated in the uh, videos, the upcoming videos, on the lifting phase of the exercise, as the elbow extends, we want to see the shoulder joint extending simultaneously. Even if the shoulder joint extension component of the overall movement is only a subtle movement, that's fine. It's supposed to be only a subtle movement. But that addition of that slight additional extension at the shoulder joint is what's going to activate uh, the long head of the tricep at its attachment across the shoulder. Then on the lowering or eccentric phase of the exercise, as the elbow progressively flexes and returns back to its starting position, we want to see the shoulder joint simultaneously flex, e again, even if it's only subtly, to return back to the pre-stretch position. So let's demonstrate a couple of these actions here with some uh, selective exercises. I want to go over f with you first uh, the seated easy curl tricep extensions. And, and these are probably one of the single best tricep exercises uh, for several reasons. First of all, uh, the seated easy curl tricep extension involves the biarticular long head of the tricep muscle, whereas many other exercises uh, do not activate uh, the long head specifically at the shoulder. So this exercise does. Uh, this exercise uh, does allow a proper pre-stretch position. And then for those that are involved in high intensity training or uh, perhaps bodybuilding or even power lifting, uh, this exercise lends itself quite nicely to the addition of accentuated eccentric uh, or heavy negative exercises. So this is one of the single best exercises uh, for many reasons. So here is the seated uh, tricep extension with an easy curl bar. The subject is seated uh, nearly vertically. Uh, and I'll just narrate uh, as we roll this video. Now, notice that the shoulder is in a position of flexion. In, fla in fact, the shoulder is flexed to approximately 170 to 180 degrees of flexion. Straight overhead would be 180 degrees of flexion. That elongates the long head of the tricep muscle over the shoulder joint, thereby putting it in a position for a maximum contraction at the elbow joint. And you can see that uh, the triceps are quite strong muscles, especially when they're placed in the pre-stretch position in advance. And so what would be another way, perhaps, that uh, we could pre-stretch the long head uh, of the tricep muscle across the shoulder joint? Well, let's talk about uh, cable tricep extensions. Uh, you might hear, uh, have heard these referred to as rope tricep extensions, and you've probably seen people uh, doing this exercise in the gym. Again, this is uh, one of the very best exercises for the tricep muscles because of its position. And I'll elaborate on that uh, as we pull up the video here in just a moment. But this is an excellent exercise, again, because it involves the multi-articular uh, long head of the bice uh, tricep muscle. 
It does allow the proper pre-stretch position, which maximally uh, elongates the muscle across the shoulder. And then it does uh, lend itself to high intensity uh, is accentuated eccentric training uh, methods for those who are involved with bodybuilding or possibly even powerlifting. So here we are. <coughs> this shows the setup position. And notice again that in this exercise, the subject has the shoulder in a position of flexion. Now, compared to uh, the alignment of the torso, the subject's upper arm is in approximately 160 to 170 degrees of shoulder flexion. And that elongates the long head of the tricep and activates the long head of the tricep, which can then go, go about its business of extending at the elbow. And you'll notice as the subject brings the weight back each time, there's a slight additional flexion of the shoulder to further pre-stretch and activate that tricep muscle, which then results in a powerful and forceful contraction of that muscle then at the elbow. Okay, and so we'll replay this uh, tricep exercise in its entirety so that you can see uh, the movement being performed at full speed. Shoulder joint is in a position of flexion. You can see that this allows the handling of quite a bit of weight because it activates the large long head of the triceps, whereas generally with most uh, simple elbow extension exercises, the long head is, is simply uh, activated only at 50 to 60 percent. So here it's activated at 100 percent along with also the lateral and medial heads. And notice the subtle little flexion of the shoulder right here. That is called the pre-stretch or the preload, which then allows for a subsequent stronger contraction uh, of the triceps muscle at the elbow. Okay, and then finally, for those that are involved in high-intensity training techniques, I want to show a, 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 a very uh, vigorous uh, sequence that involves two exercises. It involves the inclined tricep extensions, this time with the addition of the high-intensity accentuated eccentric uh, component. And then we're going to add in uh, a superset with a close grip, strong range, partial tricep presses. And both of these are overload techniques for hypertrophy and strength training. So I'll narrate this video as we start it here in just a moment, but I just want you to take notice of the setup here to begin. We're using an incline uh, bench set on a 45 degree angle of incline and it's set immediately in front of a Smith machine to facilitate the transfer uh, between the two exercises. First exercise is going to involve the incline tricep extension uh, with the addition of additional eccentric loading. And this is a fabulous exercise because uh, number one, as we've been talking about so far in this uh, program, it elongates the long head of the triceps across the shoulder joint, which activates the long head and then with the addition of additional eccentric loading allows for a forceful upward lifting or concentric phase of the movement. We then follow that up with the strong range partial presses which allow overload on the tricep muscles by virtue of the fact that the range of motion is limited only to the strong part of the range of motion which is that part of the range of motion above the sticking point. And I'm sure you're all familiar with that notorious uh, sticking point. So let's roll this video. And I'll narrate as we go. That's in the front. Yeah, that's what he's telling me. The bench is set at 45 degrees of incline. This does require a training partner. Here the long head of the tricep is, is lengthened across the shoulder joint by placing the shoulder first in a position of flexion. 
And you'll notice that the partner is adding additional downward load with his hands onto the bar on the eccentric or lowering phase of the exercise and the subject performs the lifting phase by himself. Notice the position of the long head of the tricep as it stretches across the shoulder joint. Here the shoulder goes, goes into additional flexion, further lengthening the long head. And it's that lengthening at the bottom position that activates the stretch shortening cycle and allows for a forceful and explosive contraction of the tricep muscle than at the elbow. So now the triceps muscles are activated and potentiated and that sets the stage for the overload technique of strong range partial presses. Again, notice the positioning. The shoulder is placed in a position of shoulder flexion to activate the long head, the bulky long head. And the range of motion is limited only to the strongest part of the range of motion, thereby allowing an overload stimulus which otherwise would not be possible throughout a full range of motion. And this is a fabulous sequence uh, that's guaranteed to give you a tremendous uh, training effect and a tremendous pump in your tricep muscles. So let's now go on uh, and demonstrate these exercises in their entirety and throughout uh, full ranges of motion uh, so that you see these exercises uh, being performed at their full speed.